Small Fish was a smorgasbord of new challenges and different situations. As we were finishing up on Voyager, I looked at Cam, I go, write a script and we'll make it happen. We started off, we really wanted to do a full-on casting call. Uh, hey! Hello, what can I get for you today? Do you carry any guitars? I was part of the casting crew, and it was for the first time for WSF, so it was really cool to be part of a first experience for the group. We had an open call, we did video auditions, we called in for callbacks, we discussed I think for 14 hours, who should play what role, where people should slot, where they shouldn't, and those kinds of things. I mean, we had a really good cast. Hey! Yeah. Oh, sorry, what can I get for you today? You, like, you know she's in there, but, like, you, she, you, she startles you. You're like, hey, hello, hi, like, hey. hi, yes. Hello. Hey! Uh, hello. Uh, sorry, what can I get for you today? Uh, do you carry guitars? So let's try that line, just being let me check. Let me check. Kind of like a friendly, like, let me check. I learned with a pick. I might have one running around. Let me check. I am Armand Garnett. Sean in the movie. He's homeless. My beard doesn't grow that fast, so it's a struggle. But I'm going to try. Try to find some tattered clothes. Make the most of the rehearsals. I thought the talent was going to be fine. I had no problem with anybody stepping in and doing the roles. It was a matter of could we make the world around them worth it. So I know it's kind of hard to see in there. It is an empty building. There's a back little wall there. And it has a lot of windows. The biggest challenge that we're facing right now as we come up to uh, just over a month until filming would be the location. About a month ago, we started a location search and that didn't go exactly as we thought it would. We didn't get the responses that we thought we would or in the responses that we did get didn't really fit what we needed with the script. And because of that, it kind of pushed a lot of other aspects of the film behind it because our film relies so heavily on our location. The main hope for this project is to show like an old school, like rustic, almost like mom and pop kind of feel to the entire situation. Wow, this would be pretty cool if we set up table, 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 junk. My concern with doing it down here is that this space is very empty. If you look here and just focus primarily on that half, it's got a great, it's great. I've gone through and made a lighting plan of how we're gonna light and wire this whole thing. We're gonna light the top of the set with clamp lights, so it'll kind of give it a store vibe, but then we're gonna use a lot of practicals. We gotta light the ceiling, and we gotta put power to pretty much every wall in the room so we can plug stuff in. So lighting and art department's gonna kinda of have to work together because we gotta make sure that power is where they need stuff too. The goal is to point the camera in any direction and the set looks great. So that's kind of like big picture where we're currently at. Things are rolling ahead. I, I think our first plan to kind of get in the Cam's grandparents to actually start setting stuff up is June 2nd. June 2nd. We decided to build our own store. We made our own flats and had to make a scene, a shop down in someone's basement. The greatest thing about all that was learning something new, learning how to make flats, making it look realistic, building on other people's ideas and what they have and creating something that turned out really awesome. The set for Small Fish is actually, I think, one of the coolest things about the movie, but we never built like a full-on set before. And it went from being 
flats that we built in a garage to being a full-on like storefront set that I think looked really fantastic. We had to get a bunch of fixtures to make it look like a store inside. We had to get a bunch of props. People just collaborated and brought in a lot of things and had a helping hand to put it all together and create a set that was realistic to what we needed for this film that we were shooting. You know, we had this awesome accordion and there were records and there were just all sorts of tidbits. The set really, really helped me feel like I could get in character because I had about a week to prepare. I was one of six people that auditioned and I didn't get cast. And then a couple weeks in, we had a casting change and I ended up being put on as step. The people that allowed me to have that opportunity were the people on set. They were like, hey, we trust you. It, it felt great to know that I could at least contribute in small ways. Dave single, take two, marker. We had four days of filming. The first day was just kind of beauty shots. The second day was scenes that we didn't really need everybody there. And then the third and fourth day were very much full day, all hands on deck. Let me begin by thanking each of you guys for coming out today. This film started out as a 2J shoot. We are now on day three and a half of shooting days. So thank you all for coming. I appreciate each and every one of you. As always, our main goal for today is safety. Be mindful of if you bend over, especially out here and then back there too, because back there it's dark out. But up here, we have all these little dangling lights. Those get hot. We'll have the hazer on. If it gets too hazy, our route is we're gonna pull down one of the windows pull the CTO gel off and we're gonna open it up and kind of wave it out. We have a fire extinguisher here. Hopefully we don't need to use that. We also have a first aid kit back there. If you have to use the bathroom, hold off until we're in between takes. We can go up the stairs, the bathroom is just right in the hallway on the left. When you go through this door, unless if you're an actor acting on set, don't go through it. Move it to the side like this and to go up this way just so we don't rip or anything like that. We don't want no one to get hurt. These are the shots for the intro that we want to get through. A lot of it's going to be we're going to run through it at one angle and then we'll move the camera and we'll do it again. So this is pretty much the main rig that we'll be using. It's the Blackmagic Ursa Pro Mini. And we'll be going from the camera into the Shogun for on-camera monitoring. And then we'll send a signal from the Shogun to the back where our video land is, to where our scripty directors, anybody who wants to see what the camera sees, can see what it sees. We actually used a cinema camera to film Small Fish, which not only gave us experience on how to rent equipment, but also how do you handle the file size after that. We're shooting this in 4.6K raw. So we are getting a really, really beautiful picture, but with that comes a lot, and I mean a lot of data. We have 13 minutes per card, so we need to waste as few takes as we physically can. But I'd prefer not to fill up any terabyte hard drive with footage. Yeah. <laughs> Shot one, Barbaro single, take one. Marker. Right there, we get some of the highlights from this light on your face. I do like that, so keep that in mind when you pull, when you peek through. Dave's peeking out, take three, marker. Just walking up the steps, walking up the steps, walking up the steps, walking up the steps, walking up the steps. Door shuts. You can come out now. You know, as talent, I kind of sit back for a little bit and I get to watch the DP work with the director, get to watch everybody 
do their own positions. And so that's been a, a very fun element for me is watching. We started a little later than we wanted to, but we're, we're clipping on at a good pace. Our talent is rare to go. Barbara single, take two. Marker. Door shots. You can come out now. Sorry. What are you going to do now without the pick? I guess focus on where we are now instead of holding on to the past. I like it. Sure you can get that from a fortune cookie? <laughs> well, keeps. Wish me luck. Good luck. Keeps is one of those guys that he's fully laid back. Like my default face, I look angry. It was one of those things where I forced myself to smile even uh, on camera and off camera. Okay, it was a different take. He was laid back and I like I like that. I feel like I'm laid back, but sometimes I'm like one of those laid back guys or tense. Keeps is very much a character who, I've described him as Santa Claus more than once. He knows what's going on. He knows what you need. He knows how you're gonna get there. And this dude, Seb walks in. Seb has no clue what he needs, but Keeps kind of has a clue. And it's kind of the journey between that. biggest learning experience I've had doing makeup on men actors, which isn't something that people think would be too hard, but it's something that you have to match the right skin tone and you have to make sure that their eyebrows have to be filled out too. They have to have just a little bit of makeup on, the lights and the space you're in and how close the camera is going to be to the person. So nobody really thinks about that is in the makeup world. They think, oh, women have to have all this makeup on and, and then men don't. And it's, it's actually, you have to find what works best for each actor. We've got two sides today. Basically doing Steph's shots, including the back of the shop where Seb is hiding. We're doing okay for now. But we always knock on wood when we say that. We're shooting a scene that I have been waiting for. When Steph walks in looking for a guitar, I bolt back because that's who I've been waiting on all day. This is just the strum of the guitar. Okay, all right. So the guitar stays there. You, we can open it. So if you want to, you want to assist me with opening it, so we'll open it, and then I'll lift up this end to right about right there, and then Ben, you'll you'll be like your focus would probably be like right there. Rolling, guitar insert, take four, marker, and action. How's this? This is perfect. Learning how to rack focus was the best. It's just the change of focus from one object in the distance to an object in the foreground. The trouble isn't changing focus, the trouble is changing it, not overshooting it or undershooting it. It's just that one smooth. It's like one of my favorite things to do now. I was elevated a little bit. I was assistant camera and Jake let me run camera and I was allowed to like kind of compose some of the shots and my initial instinct is to go to someone and be like, okay, does this look good? Should I do this? And Jake was like, I don't know. You choose, you decide. If you think it looks good, then it looks good. It was tough getting into that mindset of making the decision and being confident in the decision and not worrying about necessarily what other people think. Allie's checking lines over here. I'm writing down like which hand they use to grab and like what order they open the case. We take notes like this. So card one is all on this, card two. So these are all the different takes. So first take said slow down the middle, second take, boat off. The best description I have is six. This is the one that we are gonna use for print. So I just said like which hands Barbara pointed with, the order of the locks that they opened and closed the guitar case. I kind of am a yes woman. I'm willing to learn every single position. Am I going to be the greatest at it? Probably not. You know, we come across a glitch and I have to work through that. I think that kind of shows some gumption. 
Tomorrow is probably our most dialogue, I think, honestly. We're gonna have two different characters coming in. Sean and uh, Ashley. Those are the characters. Armand and Erica are the actors. And that was the scene that S'more was supposed to be in. Uh, I was really looking forward to working with her. Unfortunately, she was unavailable last moment. S'more, one of our actors who we casted, it was in an accident. Luckily she was okay, but we had to scramble to get a new actor in. Our actor, S'more, got in a car accident a few days ago and fractured her legs. She's in a wheelchair now, so she is not going to be on set. We have a replacement. She can come in tomorrow. Her name's Erica. I was talking with my friend one night and all of a sudden she mentioned, hey, my mom, they're looking for an actor to be in this film. Hi, my name is Erica Theros and I'll be reading for the part of Ashley. So I was like, yeah, I'd love to be a part of it. I was set the script that night. It was about 11 o'clock that night. The next morning I got up early and I was so excited. I memorized all the lines. Today's gonna be a long day for sure. Right now we're rubbing dirt all over Sean because <laughs> He's homeless, so we gotta make him look like Try he's not homeless. to make him look as handsome as he is. That's not yeah, it. Kinda, <laughs> That's gonna be a challenge. I'm trying to rust him up a little bit. We're against the clock. We have a lot to get in a little time. Being able to film on Friday, we were able to cut down on the amount of work that we had to do. We got a lot of work ahead of us. You have to be passionate even when those fires are out. You get up and you're like, oh, movie stuff today, but then you get on set and it feels great and you're happy to be back in it and you realize that nothing else makes sense. It's going to be a tough day for Aria. Uh, my back's a little sore, my knee's weak, arms are heavy. This is the spot to get good placement on him for audio wise and then Dave is going to sit down. All we see here is the air conditioning and the phones and the planes and the trains and the it interrupts the sound, it interferes with the sound. Dave OTS take one, marker. Action! You were saying? I was. About to pick. Oh. I think working in WSF has really revealed things that I didn't necessarily know I was good at, like being dependable or working well with people in, in terms of like stressful situations. For example, I ran audio with Dan Ignacio and I had always, you know, known him and befriended him and, and then when I had to work with him, I felt an immense amount of pressure to do the things right for Dan. We're filming Erica's exit or uh, Ashley's exit right now. I will say the last take we just did was kind of hard to get audio on. In the last take, which went pretty well, there were birds that were chirping and messing up the sound in the shot. So now my job is to get them to go away. I don't know where they are. However, I'll see a few of them fly away when I start yelling at them in Greek. Hi, I'm Nick. I'm one of the PAs. I run around, get coffee, I do the menial tasks, but even then, all that stuff, it, it, it really adds up. One of the set obstacles was that we had a big, ugly red pole in the middle of the set, so I made about 20 different flyers and decorated the whole pole and some of the staircase, and I'm very proud of those flyers. They're all originals. I like any scene that shows the set because we designed the set and it looks pretty awesome. For a while it seemed like they were never going to be over in this area. It seemed like the hallway area was just going to be a big area they were going to film at, but it's nice that they're doing the whole store. There's names for every section. This is the quilt wall. It's kind of turned into a musical area. This is the knick-knack ladder and this is actually one of my favorite displays and I got the idea from an actual antique store. The crate display and all these canned goods. And then we have the kitchen table. And then we have the consumable corner with very expensive candy bit. I'm also in charge of the pick, because we only have Let's one. Let's see the pick, hold it. Had that like thrift shoppy feel. It was like a modern and rustic combination of things all rolled into one. The character of Keeps with the old school like screwdriver twisting the metal bolts very much fit perfectly with the cell phone, very modern, charging on the countertop. I am the oldest member of the WSF production team. 
I don't like to think too far into the future because I'm really enjoying my time right now. But what I do see is this incredible group of people that work so hard for each other that I want to keep doing that. Finding the people was a big issue, right? We've got so many people here that are so willing to do everything. It's been incredible. Today, the obstacles really are getting intricate shots. We're moving the camera a lot, getting a lot of the same lines from different perspectives. Today's going to be challenging. I'm hoping to pick up the pace a little bit and get a, a better clip so that we can get done more before lunch. Thank you guys. Uh, we're gonna break for lunch for a half hour. Let's be back down at 105. For food today, we had a deli for the lunch, uh, which I did theme each and every meal for us. So lunch is meet me at the deli. And then for dinner tonight, we had a taco bar. So I called it the Sabritos Taco Bar. So far, everything's been going off without a hitch. Everyone seems to love it. We did accommodate our gluten-free and our vegetarian folks as well. So we want to make everyone inclusive here. Tomorrow we'll have deli again, and then we are going to have um, a barbecue tomorrow. Lunch went a little bit long today, and it took like a half an hour after lunch to kind of set up our first shot. Doing one take over and over and over again, and we end up utilizing more time in our time blocks that we have. The first takes were going to the wide takes, so it's a good opportunity for the actors to run through all their stuff again. But from there, we usually hit back up and we get going. Single with seven. Mark one, take one, marker. Erica lines, take two, marker. Erica enter, take two, marker. Slider Dave, mark, take three, mark. We knew if we did stuff in this order and we set this time frame, we it would work itself out. It worked to our benefit. We weren't spending so much time overthinking or thinking too much into like shots or acting or whatnot, we just go, let's just do it. Does this work for what we need? Are we okay with moving on with this? And most of the times it was yes. And then a few times we have to go back and we'll redo it, but it's knowing when to let go of what you have and be able to move on is huge. This is a warning from the past to make sure you're learning from mistakes that you did last Send me your letter when you're done Evaluating what your short life has become You should know There was a huge group effort at the end on that Sunday to tear the set down. Most of us were expecting that we'd have to come back a few more days. We had it down and out in a matter of hours. I fully expected people to leave as soon as we called strike. So far, everyone's still here. Honestly, without the passionate people, there's no small fish. There's a lot of challenges with editing. This was the first film that we shot raw. I believe at the end of Small Fish, we had almost six terabytes worth of footage, which is a lot. But once I actually had everything in Premiere and I was able to edit, I had the rough cut done in about a weekend. Got in contact with Robbie, I was like, Robbie, we have different scenes in the film and they all mean different things. 
can you write the music for it? The first time I got the rough draft and I watched it probably about six or seven times. And I think in the first couple days, I sent Jake three of the four main songs. They were the right idea. They weren't polished, but it was a rough draft, mostly acoustic guitar. First, you're watching Seb come in. You're just getting a grasp of what's going on in the story. And then all of a sudden, shift it really quick to mystery. I just kind of keep it going for a little bit. As he's getting ready to come down the stairs, or actually as the door, the bell rings and everyone's kind of looking up there. And then once his homeless sign appears or he gets visible, it switches to a... set the mood right for small fish because nostalgic that would have rang for me and so i there are two songs came to mind that i kind of incorporated into the theme and from there it just blossomed and was easy to come up with the next couple when i'm lost i find the middle man or he'll find me the first time i think all of us heard the Wherever score he'd written all of us were in awe like it was absolutely phenomenal to actually hear music that was specifically designed for this project. It wasn't going to fit anywhere else. It had to fit in this project. I always wanted to do an acoustic only score. It was always kind of a dream of mine. And the fact that the film kind of revolved around the pick and the guitar was already in there. The setting was kind of acoustic and rustic, which I loved. It all just kind of pieced together from Gilbert make something that I was really proud of and that would fit the film. Small Fish as a whole, like the project has been a huge leap in like what we do and how we can pull forward with other films. As someone that has had such a deep hand in Small Fish, you want it to do well. But the deeper your fingerprints go on it, the more afraid you are, because that means that's the more stuff that's on you. But I truly think that this is a story that resonates with people. It's about needing help, about getting the help you don't always know that you need. And I think that as long as people can understand that and then it follows and tracks and then we did our jobs, and I think we did, it can go really far. We're aiming really high for this film. We're aiming at some really prominent festivals. We're shooting for the stars and we're hoping to hit them. I think we can.